earlier this week, the Pope, Pope Francis, basically came out and said the death penalty is wrong. Every person is uh, deserving of human dignity. And that sort mm-hmm. of lit off a firestorm. And coincidentally, you ended up having an interview later that night around the topic of the death penalty. Uh, and I thought it was a great interview. So tell us a little bit more about that episode. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was funny. It was back on on, uh, on Tuesday of last week where quite literally the Pope um, had announced that uh, the death penalty would be removed from um, – not necessarily removed, but it, would, it was going to be strictly enforced that that was not a part of uh, Catholicism doctrine. And uh, literally that evening I had uh, Hannah Cox on. And uh, Hannah Cox, she's the national manager for conservatives concerned about the death penalty and uh, what they are. So they are a nationwide group – of conservatives and actually many libertarians who have joined together really questioning the concept of capital punishment with regards to looking at it in the means of saying, is this consistent with conservative principles and even libertarian principles? And uh, being that the overarching government really is a system of inefficiency, um, you know, we, we see where we have, I think she said, is 162 folks who were exonerated from death row last year alone, um, it, it shows how inefficient it is and how there, there's it's it, there's no clear cut yes or no, like this person is 100% guilty. In, and she, uh, Hannah spoke to how we've seen this change over the past you know, five years, 10 years especially, where these old you know, definitive means of determining guilt or not are, are being you know, brought into the limelight like dental um, bite marks and even some DNA testings. And we're finding that is there a role for government in in uh, using capital punishment? And um, th- the fact that uh, it was right along that time, like we said, with the Pope um, having the, the proclamation from the uh, the Catholic Church, it fit very perfectly. So I think it's a nice topic for libertarians and conservatives um, and even some Republicans to, to come together and hopefully find some coherent messaging that the government shouldn't be in the business, business of determining you know who lives and who dies. Uh, that, that you know if, if we are going to look at the government as the arbiter of in, in its idea of morality, um, but often doing so in a very inefficient, ineffective way, can we really stand on principle and say, well, yes, we're going to uh, support the government being able to then uh, determine life or death based on a crime that someone may have or may not have committed? Yeah, and since 1973, there's been 130 exonerations. And when you get into these exonerations, you know, specifically in places uh, like Florida, I think the number in Florida – was in the in the high 20s the new orleans district attorney there are consistent problems still to this day with how they handle evidence how they handle witnesses how they do lineups the dallas district attorney is a famous case where there have been a ton of exonerations in texas which you know the joke with bush was that he had like basically uh when george hw or when george w bush was uh, governor of Texas. I mean, it was he. He and Rick Perry just put people on uh, on the fast track to to the execution <laughs> chamber. It had a conveyor belt, I think yeah. it was, from the courtroom to the right to the chair. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, as libertarians, we're fundamentally against. We we distrust the government. We distrust its legal authority. And yet I've seen so many libertarians on Facebook around the Pope and and some other issues supporting the death penalty. And I just have to say why. I I don't understand why when when you think about the role of the state, of government, yes, libertarians, some libertarians look at the proper role of government to meter out justice. Now, Harry... Is smiling, so he may not he may not agree with that. What what are you thinking over there? I'm sorry, I was busy searching for the proper role of government. (laughs) But but yeah, I like the line of thinking because one of the largest killers of human beings have been governments, right? And Mm -hmm. the for some reason, when everyone when the judge puts on their funny robe, people put on their Sunday best, and they vote on it, and they're supposed to make this barbaric style of killing someone based off something they did. It doesn't make the victim whole. It doesn't do anything. And for the thing, and considering of you are correct of how evidence is handled, and that people are basically just arguing cases and bringing up evidence that 
you know, sometimes sometimes during discovery on cases, the defense attorney it doesn't find out all basically the pieces that are being brought against someone. So they're basically getting out argued and then having this person get on death row just because they don't know all the evidence that was brought against him. Yeah, when you watch just, mm-hmm. when you watch shows like The Staircase or Making a Murderer, uh, Making a Murderer, I don't mm-hmm. know what it's called, on Netflix, all these true crime documentaries, you start to see how murky the justice system mm-hmm. is. And to, oh, yeah. pu- to put the power of life and death into the hands of this murky system, to me, mm-hmm. doesn't make a lot of sense, especially when you get into the financial aspects of... It's so expensive. I learned this on on your podcast, Brian. It's so expensive mm. to do a death penalty case that most states will not release how much it costs them to do death penalty cases. Uh, and so Correct. it costs the state more to do death penalty cases because of appeals than than life in prison. Uh, and yeah, that part blew me away. I couldn't when she said that. I I actually had to stop her because I wanted to make sure that that point was driven home. That for cases that people are put to death. They're ten times more expensive than comparable cases where people are put in life behind bars. And she, I think she mentioned California. Um, it showed in just that state alone, they were twenty times more expensive. Um, so I think, and I, I, so I asked the question. I used the anecdote of saying, okay, well, let's just say, you know, there's a situation where you have someone who's done something absolutely abhorrent, and like. You know, let, let's say it was a, a child molestation ca- case, and you hear a lot of people who will make the argument saying, "Well, just just you know, go ahead, put them on the electric chair, and just end it because it's going to cost more to keep them in jail." And the fact that that's not the case, and it actually is ten times more expensive to do that in lieu of keeping them in jail, was just absolutely mind blowing to me. So here's something from the Foundation for Economic Education. After the death penalty was reinstated in 1976 by the Supreme Court. Um, it, 552 of the 14, uh, 1,477 executions have taken place in Texas. So nearly 30%, a little more. Um, the most liberal state since 1978 in California has spent uh, has spent over $4 billion on the death penalty. And they would save over 20, 20, over the next 20 years, they'd save $5 billion if they commuted all those on death, uh, death row to life without parole. So five mm-hmm. billion dollars over the next twenty years, California would save if they converted those sentences from the death penalty to just death row life without parole. It's a lot of water, yeah. right? So, <laughs> um, the failures continue in, into the execution room itself. As three percent of execution attempts from eighteen ninety to twenty ten were botched, uh, lethal injection, which has been used since seventy six, fails seven percent of the time. Um, so people, you know, end up convulsing on the table. So even conservatives are starting to change their mind. Uh, Forty Republican lawmakers sponsored a death penalty repeal bill in 2016 um, from the group that you interviewed. Uh, Gallup polls showed a 10 percent decline in Republican support for the death penalty in 2017. So they are still the biggest driver, but. Yeah, I think from when you listen to your interview with Hannah Cox, uh, and then you read some of the other resources that I've got in the show notes that you can get if you sign up on our email newsletter or go to wearelibertarians.com uh, or look in the show notes on your podcast app, you'll you'll start to look at this, I think, in a different way. So I highly encourage people to check this out. Uh, Brian, any other thoughts on the death penalty or about this particular episode? So, I mean, one thing, and I think this is important for the more conservative uh, listeners who tend to to err on believing law enforcement, one part that Hannah brought up that I thought was very interesting as well is that due to – it was a survey in 2009 that looked at all law enforcement and police officers and police chiefs ranked the death penalty as the least effective way to reduce violent crimes. Um, so I think we, we not only need to look at this from a moral issue, but we also have to listen you know, to, to the people who are actually in charge of bringing these people in. You know, it's not working. What, what we're doing now in the, with using the death penalty, it's not working. It's making things worse. It's, it's breeding this, um, this almost like it's a lifestyle of pain 
from the families of those who were wrongfully accused and then, un, un, you know, untimely put to death because of, of you know, whether it's like Terry mentioned, false DNA, um, inaccurate testimony or judges just not caring. I mean, one part Hannah mentioned there was a, a case where a, a judge was speaking to the the um, person who was on death row and they were complaining because their lawyer was intoxicated. And the lawyer and the judge said, well, the, the Constitution gar guarantees you the right to have a lawyer. It doesn't say they guarantee you to a sober lawyer. And I mean, that I think we re we really need to look at how we're approaching the system, you know, across the board and, and say you know, it's not working. It's causing more more strife. More, it's costing more money. And it's ultimately it's not humane. Um, so if, if folks are interested in learning more, obviously, please swing over to my show and, and listen to the episode. Um, it, it was aired. You know, it was just published here this past uh, Tuesday, but it's episode 28. And it's a uh, conservatives concerned about the death penalty. You can also check out their website. It's a uh, conservativesconcerned.org. And if you're interested in following Hannah, again, she's the national uh, manager for conservatives concerned about the death penalty. You can follow her on Twitter at Hannah Cox seven. Um, so, yeah, thank you again, Chris, for having me on the show and uh, being able to bring this up. And, uh, you know, hopefully folks can can go and enjoy the uh, the episode and really leave the episode feeling more informed or, as I like to say, educated, enlightened, and informed. Who you got coming up this week? Yeah, so um, I actually, so it, this is a, a double week. Um, so I had Hannah on, obviously, back on Tuesday, and then coming up here on Friday, um, I'm joined by the, the, the one and only Jeffrey Tucker. Um, and it was an absolutely phenomenal interview I had with Jeffrey. We started out talking about um, Trump and and the current right left collectivism that's in America. Uh, we discussed Jordan Peterson and uh, how he is considered a quote unquote uh, alt right killer slash educator. Uh, we discussed Trump's tariffs and uh, Trump's economic nationalism, and we discussed uh, the immigration and welfare state. Uh, and I think it was an absolutely phenomenal conversation because, I mean, Jeffrey Tucker has a, a way of just being able to break down these sometimes very hard to uh, to understand topics that can be a little complicated and nuanced and, and really explain them in an easy to digest way. So you can walk away from the episode feeling like you, you've really had the chance to learn something and understand something in a much better way. All right, cool. Brian Nichols, The Brian Nichols Show. You can find the link to that podcast at WeAreLibertarians.com. Find it in any podcatcher, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, everywhere podcaster slang. You can find Brian Nichols and all of the We Are Libertarians Network shows. Brian, thanks for joining us here on the show. Absolutely. Chris, Harry, have a great night, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.